It was just two days before Jerry Martin's fourth birthday when tragedy struck. On that fateful day, on July 9, 1945, a mysterious woman approached Jerry and his older brother Tom, who was six, and lured Jerry away with her. For years, the boy remained missing, and his family eventually accepted the worst. But after 74 years, a very shocking revelation emerged from an entirely unexpected source. How did this revelation come to light after so long? Why did it take 74 years? Let's unravel the mystery together. Welcome to Cold Case Files, where we bring you the most notorious cold cases from history. And today, we're talking about a 74-year-old missing child cold case that was finally solved. But first, if you haven't subscribed to our channel by now, please consider hitting the subscribe and like buttons. Let's dive into the mystery without further ado. Today's case takes us to Manhattan, one of the five boroughs of New York City and the one with the highest population density of them all. The Hudson, East River, and Harlem Rivers encircle Manhattan Island, which marks the majority of the area. It is the core of the Big Apple, one of the biggest commercial, financial, and cultural areas in the world. The Empire State Building, Times Square, and Broadway are some of its most recognizable landmarks. Manhattan has been described as the cultural, financial, media, and entertainment capital of the world, and holds the United Nations headquarters. The majority of the world's art auctions are held at various art galleries and auction houses in Manhattan, which also acts as the hub of the international art market. It is in this bustling metropolis that our story begins today. July 9, 1945 was a warm summer day, and two young brothers, Tom and Jerry, were riding their bikes together near their home in Manhattan. As they were pedaling along, a mysterious woman approached them and offered them some candy. While Tom was hesitant and refused the offer, his younger brother Jerry couldn't resist the temptation and eagerly accepted the treat. The woman then took Jerry by the hand and promised Tom that they would return shortly. However, as the hours ticked by, there was no sign of the woman or Jerry. Tom freaked out and ran to inform his parents that his little brother had been kidnapped. Their parents became increasingly worried and contacted the authorities, launching a frantic search for their missing son. Despite extensive efforts, Jerry was never found and his disappearance remained a mystery that haunted Tom and his family for the rest of their lives. The pain of losing a child in such a sudden and traumatic way was unimaginable and the Martin family was forever scarred by this tragic event. Harold Martin and Nancy Martin were the parents of the two boys, Tom and Jerry Martin. Unfortunately, the couple had already separated at the time when Jerry disappeared, leaving the family shattered and distressed. Adding to the complexity of the situation, Harold had remarried and had a one-year-old daughter named Mary, which created further suspicion around Jerry's disappearance. Police wondered whether one of the parents had taken the boy due to a personal dispute. Despite the circumstances, Nancy maintained her innocence and insisted that she had nothing to do with Jerry vanishing. Her family stood firmly by her side, never doubting her claims. However, as time passed, the mystery of Jerry's disappearance remained unresolved and the family was left to pick up the pieces and move on with their lives. Months turned into years and before they knew it, decades had gone by with no sign of Jerry. The Martin family never gave up hope that they would one day be reunited with their beloved son and brother, but as the years went on, that hope began to fade. Harold and Nancy passed away, leaving their son Tom to continue the search for Jerry. Determined to find his long-lost brother, Tom spared no effort in his quest for answers. When DNA testing came about in the 2000s, he submitted his DNA for ancestry testing, hoping that the results would provide some clues as to Jerry's whereabouts. Tom remained optimistic, even though the search had been going on for so many years. He knew that if there was a chance that Jerry was out there, he had to keep looking. 
The Martin family's story is one of heartbreak and perseverance. The loss of a child is something that no parent should have to endure, and the fact that Jerry's disappearance remained unsolved after all these years was a tragedy. Nevertheless, Tom's unrelenting commitment to finding his brother served as a testament to the enduring love and resilience of the human spirit. In 2007, a breakthrough came when no one expected it. In order to determine which of her triplets were identical siblings and which was the fraternal sibling, Audrey Bell, a 51-year-old Long Island mother of triplets, bought a 23andMe testing kit online in 2017. Bell was surprised to discover through the 23andMe DNA test that she was not of Italian descent as she had been led to believe by her parents all her life. Instead, the test revealed that her genetic makeup was of Irish, Scottish, and Spanish origin. Audrey was puzzled, especially as her father, Richard Palmadesso, had always proudly identified with his Italian heritage. Audrey asked her parents about the results, but they were also confused, and so she decided to move on with her life. Although Audrey had always been informed that her ancestors were from southern Europe, the results stated nothing about Italy. Belle, whose maiden name was Palmadesso, was raised in a proud Italian-American family in New York. The thought of not being Italian had never even occurred to her. They chalked it up to a computer error and carried on with their lives. The Palmadesos did not inquire more with 23andMe or conduct any other research until two years later. In 2019, Audrey's twin sister, Cynthia McFadden, and their younger sister, Stephanie Palmadesso, took DNA ancestry tests of their own and were shocked to discover that they too lacked any Italian ancestry. Just to clarify the confusion of the sisters having different surnames, Cynthia and Audrey are twin sisters who go by their married last names. When her sister Cynthia chose to send in her own DNA sample to 23andMe in 2019, the story resurfaced. This time, she also received unexpected answers. The information revealed that Cynthia was also not Italian. The sisters struggled to explain what was happening because their father had been dead for two years by this point. So they went to the next person they felt could have some information, their cousin Richard Palmadesso, who also happened to have the same name as their father. The test's findings were essentially a surprise. Richard revealed to Cynthia and Audrey that while they were both linked to one another, the remainder of the Palmadesso family was not even remotely related to them. Cynthia, in contrast to Audrey, had made the choice to allow 23andMe to reveal any genetic relative relationships in their database, which essentially shows someone if there were any other DNA profiles in their database matching with the person's results. She was shocked when a man named Tom Martin appeared as a match for her, and it showed that the twins both shared 22% of their DNA with him, making Tom either their grandfather or uncle. Yet this was also puzzling given that none of the Palmadesos had even spoken to Tom Martin. He was 79 years old at the time, retired and residing in Florida. He supposedly put in his own DNA to solve the kidnapping of his brother Jerry, and as luck would have it, it was the key. They later decided to personally reach out to Tom through 23andMe and speak with him. Tom informed Cynthia and Audrey that when he was six years old and his younger brother Jerry was only two days away from turning four, Jerry was abducted on July 9, 1945. Tom spent decades trying to locate his missing brother and eventually created a DNA profile. Cynthia and Audrey began to question whether their father, whom they had always known as Richard Palmadesso, could possibly be Jerry Martin. In the present day, it is uncommon for children to be abducted by strangers in the United States as the cases made up just about 1% of the cases that the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children handled in 2019. However, it is challenging to determine the frequency and details of kidnappings that occurred before the 1980s. It was only in 1983 that the Missing Children Assistance Act was enacted and a National Registry for Missing Children was established. 
What is known is that during the first half of the 20th century, infant and children abductions occurred frequently, primarily for the purpose of black market adoption, and sometimes directly by women who were unable to conceive and wanted to become mothers. Even if there had been a national database at the time, it would have been difficult to quantify these incidents because families might not have discovered the kidnappings until much later, if at all. With no DNA testing available, families may have unknowingly raised children who were not biologically related to them due to a hospital mistake or a cover-up kidnapping. During the first half of the 20th century, the typical kidnapper profile was a woman who was unable to have children and felt societal or partner pressure to have one. Cynthia, suspecting that Jerry Martin may have been Richard Palmadesso, asked her brother-in-law, who worked in law enforcement, to investigate the cold case. However, the family was informed that the file may have been destroyed in a precinct fire. This New York Daily News article was one of the few pieces of evidence the twins found with details of the kidnapping. As they got to know Tom better, they discovered more similarities and clues that supported the DNA results. After exchanging photos, the twins realized that Tom and Richard had a remarkable resemblance. During their first meeting with Tom in person in 2019, they found out that the similarities did not end there. They were surprised to discover that Tom shared the same interests as their father, such as coconut cake, movies, and acting. Moreover, Tom had some headshots from his younger years, indicating his interest in acting. Even though everything seemed to be in order, the question remained. If Richard was indeed Jerry, did the Palmadesos know he had been abducted? Who knew what, and how long had they known? Richard Palmadesso's birth certificate states that he was born on May 31, 1943, in Staten Island, to Isabel and Angelo Palmadesso. Prior to his birth, Isabel and Angelo had no children together. However, Isabel, who was in her 40s, had two daughters from a previous relationship who were already in their 20s. Despite having two grown children from a previous relationship, Isabel, who was in her 40s and had never given birth to a child with Angelo, was desperate to give him a child. Before Angelo's September return from the war, she allegedly grabbed Jerry and brought him to their house in June. Isabel informed Jerry that he was now Richard and that he was only two years old, not four. She altered a birth certificate to have his date of birth set to 1943. Please keep in mind that this whole narrative has been theorized and it is best to take it with a grain of salt. Although this was a startling revelation to the sisters during their meeting with Tom Martin, Richard Palmadesso, their father's cousin, thought it was nothing new. He asserted that Richard, their father, was the only member of the Palmadesso family who was uninformed that their father was not a blood connection. The rest of the family understood the truth, according to him. Richard explained to the sisters how their father was shunned by Isabel as a youngster and prevented from speaking at the dinner table. Their father therefore developed anxiety, which he carried into adulthood. None of his family members, including Angelo, who passed away when their father was 26 years old, made an effort to stay in touch when he finished school and moved away. Richard's daughters had a theory that Isabel, Angelo's wife, may have become pregnant with a child just before Angelo left for World War II, and possibly had a miscarriage or lied to Angelo about being pregnant. With Angelo's return in sight after the Nazi surrender, they speculated whether Isabel felt the need to produce a two-year-old son for him, and whether she decided to kidnap Jerry for that purpose. It was suggested by the sisters that Isabel may have kidnapped a child to raise as her own, but they were unable to prove their theory. According to this theory, Isabel's actions were not typical of cases where women kidnap infants to make their husbands believe the child is theirs. What made the situation even more puzzling was how Jerry would have been explained, especially if he had been taken directly to the Palmadesso's home after the abduction. He would have been given a new name and parents and told that he was now two years old instead of four. 
Tom, his wife Mary, Audrey, and Cynthia communicate often on Facebook, text messages, and the phone today. The sisters share cherished memories of their father with Tom and Mary as they celebrate each other's big occasions for the time being remotely. Mary gave Tom framed photos of the sisters' visit in Florida earlier this year. He never had any children of his own, so she gave them to him on Father's Day. Even so, Audrey and Cynthia are saddened to learn that their father was abducted because he lost out on having siblings with whom he may have formed a close relationship. Even though there are still a lot of unresolved concerns, the women now have a better understanding of their father thanks to learning about his kidnapping. They remember him as being compassionate, witty, and playful, but also struggling with bipolar disorder and persistent anxiety. The twins were never able to understand the distance that existed between him and his family. Now, it all makes sense as to why the majority of the Palmadesso family had lost touch with Richard and had taken either no action or very little initiative to get to know his wife and kids. Audrey says that Tom appears to have gained some closure as well. She explains that he becomes upset about the fact that they couldn't find each other in time to meet again but is pleased to know that her father had a family who loved and cared for him. She adds that Tom is convinced that her dad is now reunited with his biological parents. What were your thoughts on this unexpected discovery? Thanks to DNA testing, now a brother's soul is finally at peace. Please leave your thoughts in the comments section below. And please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until then... Stay safe.